Hello everyone, we are back from our much needed break with an episode of Quick Tips. Recently, Procreate released their latest update, which added 3D support to their app. We decided to check this new feature out for ourselves and see how it can be useful for us in our ongoing concept creation series. In this video, I'll be going over how I use Procreate to paint the textures on one of our assets. I have explored a similar approach before in an older video, where I was using Photoshop and Blender at the same time. But with Procreate, this step has become very streamlined and intuitive. Let's get started. I've imported one of our door assets into Procreate as an OBJ file. We had some small issues with the geometry in our previous attempts and Christina was able to resolve those by adding a triangulate modifier in Blender. Before we get started on the painting, let's pick a brush and then tap on it again to open the brush studio. Go to the materials tab and now you can change the material quality of your brush. You can add a metallic quality to it and adjust how smooth or rough you want the material to be. The preview sphere we have on the right hand side is really useful when it comes to seeing how the adjustments are going to reflect on your model. You can also access some extra 3D options in the actions window, such as editing the lights and environment. You can move the existing lights around or add a new one if you like. You can also change the environment you are painting in. This is really going to make a difference if you are working with glossy reflective materials. Alright, I'm going to start painting the wooden parts of the door first. I'm going to make sure my material is completely non-metallic and then add some roughness to it. Then pick a color and paint just as usual. You can also drag and drop a color to cover the entire asset if you like. I'm going to just drop some colors down to create a base to work on. Another cool feature is, you can tap on the Show 2D Texture option to see your unwrapped texture. It's also possible to directly paint on this if you want to do that. Before I move on any further, I'm going to turn on the reference window. I've already found a photo that I want to use as reference and imported it in. You can also switch to the 3D view and use this for an overview on the whole asset. This will come in handy when you need to zoom in and work on small details. Or with the 2D option, you can check on the progress of your unwrapped texture file. Alright, let's go back to our reference and color pick from it to help with our base colors. I'm trying to create some color variety right now, so the end product hopefully is not going to look too artificial and digitally painted. Now, I'm going to create a new layer on top and start drawing my line work. This is very similar to how I would work if I was working in 2D, and it feels really nice to be able to follow the same workflow while working on a 3D model. Drawing on a 3D model like this does offer its own unique challenges though. Getting the right placement on the geometry and making sure the line thickness is balanced overall can be a bit tricky at the beginning, but this is a new process for me, so I'm going to be patient and give myself some time to get used to it.
As I'm drawing, I'm keeping in mind the difference between the wood and metal parts and using a different style of line work for each. Wooden panels have more organic soft lines whereas the metal parts have sharp scratches and chipped pieces. I want my line work to support the difference in color and material as much as possible. I'm going to be painting the metal parts on a separate layer. This will also require me to change the material settings a bit. I want these sections to look like metal, but not shiny brand new stuff. It's old and scuffed up, rusty in parts. So I adjust the material slider around to give me the effect that I'm looking for, then get to painting. Remember, you can use the selection tools to speed up parts of this process. I add some texture and color variation to the metal parts as well, then zoom in to paint some of the scratches and dents. I think it really helps to add in this sort of baked in light information on a model. And of course, when in doubt, just bring in some relevant reference to help you out with the process. The rest is really just putting in time to get it all done. I have to admit, it was incredibly comfortable to work on this. Procreate is a really intuitive app and the whole process felt very smooth. I was just sitting on my couch and listening to podcasts while working on this and had a really great time doing so. When you're done, all you have to do is export your model out with the share option. I've exported it out as an OBJ file again. After that, we decided to test it out in Unreal. I'm quite happy with how this is looking. I think the materials translated really well. Looking at this is making me excited about painting the rest of the assets and putting them all together in Unreal Engine to create our environment. And that's it for this video. It's good to be back and working on this project again. We are still quite busy with our freelance work, but hopefully we'll be able to progress at a reasonable pace on the Raven Shroud environment from this point on. Thanks for your patience everyone, take care and we'll see you all next time.